Well, does our God write some amazing stories or what? What an incredible story of the power of God's word and of God's grace, the transforming power. Night after night, I stand here just humbled by this whole experience, but there's probably not a part of the, the concert I enjoy or I'm more humbled by or more privileged to do than this moment right now when I get to introduce you to a man who's become a dear friend of mine and uh, a man who I consider to be a mentor of mine in many ways. And it's a great privilege to get introduced to you, Mr. Steve Saint. It was just over a month ago that I was watching television on the anniversary of September 11th. The program I was watching dealt with the terrible trauma that is being faced by young children who lost parents in that terrible tragedy. And you know, as I watched that program, I couldn't help but remember when I was a little boy the night that my mom took me into her room to tell me that my dad had been killed and that he would never be able to come home and live with us again. And that could have been my tragedy, except that my mom was a woman of faith and she went on to explain to me that she was sure that even this terrible thing that was happening to us was part of God's plan and that she believed someday we would know that for sure. And since then, I've found out for myself that God never wastes a hurt if we'll let him write his story with our lives. And today I know that both of those are true because the very people who brutally killed my dad and Roger and Pete and Ed and Jim are like family to me. And one of those very men who speared my dad to death and then threw his body into the river to be eaten by the fish and turtles, just a couple years later when I went in to live with the people, and my Aunt Rachel, that man made it clear to me that he wanted me to be like his own son. And when he would take his boys out into the jungles to teach them to hunt with a blowgun and to spear larger animals and to get fish in the river, he taught me the same thing so that I could go on living there with him and his people. And I've had the chance to take Steve and his boys and some of this great band and one of their sons down to the jungles with me to introduce them to my tribal family and especially to grandfather. And they've gotten to see for themselves what God can do to reconcile people to each other if we let him write the story and that he can transform any life that is willing to let him. Two years ago, Grandfather and I were at our family home in Florida on our way to speak at a conference in Europe. And while we were there, my 20-year-old and only daughter came home. She'd been traveling around the country and around the world with a Christian singing group for a year. It seemed like it had been forever, and we were so excited that Stephanie was coming home. So we all got together and we went down to the Orlando International Airport to welcome her and just so that she would know and to embarrass her a little bit, we made signs, welcome home, Steph. And grandfather can't read. So he took his sign, had it upside down, and was jumping up and down. He wanted Stephanie to know how happy he was that she was home. And then we went home, and we were having this wonderful welcome home party with our family and a few close friends. And during that party, I passed Stephanie in the hall. She was almost as tall as I was, and she put her long arms around me and gave me a hug and said, Pop, I love you. And I'm telling you, just for an instant, I think I saw and felt what God must see and feel when his children love him back. And then a few minutes later, Jenny came to me, and she whispered, Hey, come back with me to Steph's room. I thought it was a conspiracy to get Steph all to ourselves, and so we went back to her room, but it turned out that Stephanie had a headache and wanted me to pray. So as Ginny rocked Steph, I put my arms around both of them and prayed that God would take the pain away. And you know what? He did. But he didn't follow my script. And as Ginny, pray, as Ginny rocked Stephanie and I prayed, 
she had a massive cerebral hemorrhage and died. I didn't know what was going on, so I called 911, and the ambulance came, and we rushed Stephanie down to the nearest hospital. And just a few minutes after we got there, grandfather came with our boys behind. And when he came into the emergency room, he was just desperate to protect his granddaughter from these people who had rushed into our home and dragged his granddaughter away. But when I told him that these things that they were doing, putting needles in her arm and a tube down her throat, weren't meant to harm her and that they hadn't caused this problem, then he grabbed me again, only there was a different expression on his face. And he almost looked excited and he said, Baba, Baba, using my tribal name. Now I see this well. Don't you realize God himself is doing this, taking stars, he called Stephanie, to live in his place. And then he called to the staff there in the emergency room. He said, people, being a God follower, I'm going to die soon and I too am going to God's place. And if you'll just follow God's trail like Stephanie and I have been, then when you come there, Nemo and I will be waiting to greet you in God's place. I have to tell you, it was a, it was a hard thing for me to get my faith around what grandfather was saying. And isn't it incredible that in the hour of my greatest agony, God used the very man who had killed my father to encourage me to go on believing that he did have a plan and that even this excruciating hurt that I was feeling would somehow not be wasted as God continued to write his story in my life. And so would you welcome one of my dearest friends in the whole world and your brother in Christ, Mame, Grandfather Minkai. People ask grandfather and me two questions all the time. They want to know if it's really true that we love each other. If you want to know for sure, you have to come on the tour bus with us and, and see for yourself. But the other question that they ask us is how something like this can happen. A USA Today editor, when he was interviewing us, said, you know, I can understand possibly forgiving the man who killed your father, but he said, but loving him, that seems almost morbid. And you know, it would be if it wasn't true. But the answer to why and how something like this can happen is really very simple. It's God's grace and the power of his word. Now I'm going to ask grandfather to tell you in his own talk what God has done for him. And then I'm going to translate it into your talk as best as I can. A long time ago, I wasn't a God follower. Nobody had ever come to teach me how. Even my parents and grandparents, the ancient ones too, nobody had ever come to teach them how could we walk this trail. We hadn't seen the markings that mark this trail. So how could we find it? And then he said, what are we going to do? And then one day, two women came to live with us. One was Dayuma, who had fled from killings in the tribe, and the other one, he said, was Nemo, Star, my Aunt Rachel. Coming, they said, are you people living angry and hating like you used to? Haven't you seen God's markings? And we said, how could we see it? <laughs> And then they said to us, people, if you keep walking your own trail, when you come to the end, what's going to happen to you? Where will you be? And we had to say, coming to the end of our trail, they'll just put us in the hole in the ground and we'll be dead. 
ni mwa pa ni abane ka mono ni angwa mo nga di kina ni win pa ni mo ano ba nga apa ni kema grandfather said and then and then something that i didn't expect happened i had been listening to this talk and i knew it was a good talk but because my heart was so dark i couldn't understand it he said but then the creator wangungi he sent wangungi on awoka his holy spirit coming he took a very strong blood that jesus his son dripped and dripped for me and with that strong blood he did what you foreigners do with soap when your clothes are dirty and they have stains on them and you have to wash them wangungi on awoka took itota's blood and with that very strong blood he washed my heart until it was clean like the sky when it has no clouds in it wangungi anamba boti mo poni mini mo wa poni ponga mini mana poni na mai mini mo de pona mai irani and ngadi ponga mini mini mo de amba If you go and speak God's carvings there will be some people who will say ba I don't want to walk this trail. Well, you just keep walking but you keep inviting others because others are going to say yes and they're going to come walking this trail with you. Na na oto da nai mai botan ka baba. Kinan te oto da tiri ga kai. Ameno mimina ameno arkan ma apene ra na na ngai mai boto mini ki mini apene baba boto giri na ibe kan mai ko ke ke bunge de to me mo mai ko ke bunge de apene baba Grandfather says I can't stay here in your place for very much longer I have to go back to my place with all the trees and speak to my own people there and maybe I'm not going to see you again but if you're a god follower and here tonight when we go to heaven He said then I'm going to be talking to you myself. I think he means without Baba interpreting for him. No button telemo imini o amini himo irani. Grandfather says, "Are you foreigners understanding me?" And then he said, "If you're understanding me, then are you going to say, "Ooh, that's how the Waurani in a group say yes." So, ini mini pa Uh, okay. <laughs>